Hello, and welcome to today's episode of the Authentic Uprising podcast. I'm your host, Jill Simons, and I'm so excited to grow in the radical art of standing in what God says about you with you today. The show is a place where we pour into the sense of who God is, who we are, and how we can live more in the freedom that He has for us every single day. Hello, and welcome to the Authentic Uprising podcast. As always, I'm your host, Jill Simons, and I'm so happy to be here with you today, just like I always am. And as you know, this quarter, we're really taking a lot of time to focus on the presence of God. And today we're going to be really concrete, really actionable on that front. What can we do with busy everyday lives to really practice the presence of God? So to talk with me about this today, I have Tracy Rhodes, who is an author and a Bible teacher who has written this incredible book called Shaky Ground, What to Do After the Bottom Drops Out, where she really digs into what we can do in our daily lives to practice this presence of God. So Tracy, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to our conversation. So why don't you start out by telling me a little bit about, because I know this is your second book. So how did you get started in writing in general? Sure. I started a blog in 2014. Um, I had already been writing a little bit of devotional kind of pieces for my local church and for the women's ministry there. And they were well received. And I thought, I wonder if I figured out how to how to start a blog. I had no idea if it would have a bigger audience, if there would be other readers who were interested in the things that I was writing about. And I named my blog Traces of Faith. And it's kind of a spinoff on my name, Tracy, but it's also just that idea that actually gets to the heart of what we're going to talk about today, the fact that we can find traces of our faith and traces of God in everything that we do in our daily lives. And so I started out writing, um, I am um, a mom and a a wife. Uh, I stay at home with my daughter, which we all know does not make me necessarily a (laughs) <laughs> sit on the couch, stay at home, mom. Um, but I just started from there. And then very quickly, I would say in the first three or four months, discovered that the things I was most passionate about, about were also the things that seemed to resonate the most with my readers. And that was the idea of church. Um, And and church grew really big. I started learning about brand new to me things like church calendar, um, various different uh, church traditions. I I only say halfway jokingly, I did not know that there was an Orthodox Christian tradition until I was probably 35. (laughs) I mean, I I watched my big fat Greek wedding. And so I was kind of like, okay, they're doing church a little bit differently but no idea um, what the history and the um, terminology and the variety of worship existed there. And that's just one example. And it in my life and in my writing, um, both books that I have written focus on it, it, it just took off. Um, I just grew so in love with the greater church. I often call it the capital C church and all the ways that it helps us learn more about Jesus, that it helps us worship God more fully. And so, yeah, that's, that's to this day, still the journey that I am on. Um, My first book came out in 2020. We were two months into a quarantine (laughs) from the pandemic. So that made um, for an interesting book launch, but it did okay. And then the second book came out in July of this year. And so we're at a much better place. I was able to have a launch party locally for my book and that kind of stuff. So it was fun to get to do some of the things that I hadn't had the opportunity to do the first time around. That's awesome. I love, I love 
also like the things, the structures put in place by the church and how much value there is in the longevity of the church. And the fact that there's things that people have prayed for thousands of years and people have, you know, walked through together. Um, I think so often when I read like the Psalms in the old Testament, that this is the same scriptures that the apostles were studying and how just Mm -hmm. the beautiful continuity that that lends to the whole life of faith. Um, And so I'm, I'm so interested then in what some of the big takeaways were for you from this research really in terms of how the big C church can empower us in our daily lives to grow in really that awareness that God is with us. Well, the biggest part that that became an overall arc of the book was that our faith is not an individual faith. Um, It's as you alluded to, it's tied clear back to the apostles. There's an amazing wealth of church history, no matter what part of the world you look at. And even then today, we form these local bodies of believers. That's the local church. And so there was a lot of um, discussion about proceeding forth, even in your daily time with God, keeping that in mind. Um, and so we looked, the book is divided into, um, if I remember correctly, it's six or seven sections. And within each one, we really dive into, for example, um, one section is prayer. What does it look like for me to pray as an individual? But then how does it impact my life to pray corporately when I'm at church on a Sunday morning? Or if I'm using um, the Book of Common Prayer, for example, which is an Anglican and Episcopalian formal book of prayer from the 16th century, then how does that impact my prayer life? So there's just this constantly weaving in and out of an individual need to turn our focus on Jesus, even when it's busy, even when it's um, lacking emotions. Sometimes we do it out of duty and out of a discipline, right? But I liken it. I mean, it's such an obvious analogy. Those people who are, who have developed a healthy habit of working out, you don't always feel like it. You know, you don't always feel like going, going to the gym or getting on that treadmill and spending your, your time there. Um, It's probably even more imperative when we look at our spiritual lives to be sure that those habits are developed. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh love the idea of this is something that I've come across in the last year that I've really been developing in my own work. This idea that when we are involved in corporate prayer, that's when we're really relating to God in his person as King. Whereas when we have the individual prayer, we're really relating to God as father and both are so essential to who he is. And that's something that then we get to kind of step into the fullness of, you know, if you think about if, if the actual King is also your dad, you know, what does that mean for your life? And there's going to be these parts that are more formalized where you're really stepping into that history and tradition. And there's also going to be be these parts that are a lot more intimate, sitting on the couch, like climbing up on his lap, things like that. And both of them are so essential to really honoring the fullness of who this person is that we're called into relationship with. That is really helpful. I love it. I love the way that you, because now I'm thinking, okay, if, if your dad is a king and you go to parliament, you're not going to be like, Hey dad, you know, there's, there's some pomp and circumstance to that. And there's a formality. Um, but then, yeah, whenever you get home to the castle, <laughs> yep. and are, you know, sitting down for, for evening dinner, he's your dad, he's your father. So yeah, that's, that's really beautiful. I'll spend some time thinking on that. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so what is it that you do in your own life now that helps you to really have that awareness as you go through your day of God walking with you? I always start my mornings with him. And it, w- before we started um, 
the podcast, we talked about how a lot of your readers are busy moms. And so I will confess right up front, I'm in a different stage of life. <laughs> so I have a teenager um, who who is very self-capable of um, taking care of herself for a while. And again, don't get up and 5 30, 6 o'clock head to an office. And so it is a little different circumstance for me. But that being said, I start typically, I call it something that kind of wakes my mind up. Um, and I rotate through different things. I might start with a book of poetry and just read a poem. Um, I might, and this is going to sound interesting, sometimes I read really heady, like more textbook style books on theology, but I'll only read a section at a time because that's about all, you know, that I, that I can grasp at any given time. So I might read one section from whatever theology book I'm making my way through. I do have a number of formal prayer books. Um, I already mentioned the Book of Common Prayer. Um, I have a Catholic uh, daily missal to M-I-S-S-A-L. Hopefully I'm saying that right. And um there's a Coptic Orthodox prayer book that I use called the Agpia. And again, just these, I mean, I, even, even if that's all you do while your coffee is getting ready, it's one or two minutes is all it takes to put your mind on spiritual things, mind on, um, on the father above. And from there, I do a daily Bible reading. Um, and that can take 15 or 20 minutes. Um, and I find for those that maybe don't have time to do that in the morning, some people will do it over their lunch hour. Some people will listen to it on their drive um, into work or into school. Some people, there's no way they're going to get that done in the morning. So they do it in the evening. So it's, you know, a matter of carving out the amount of time and the time of day that works for you. And I've also found those times when I do have an appointment early in the morning and so don't have time for the full routine of things, there are a number of daily apps that you can download on your phone. The one one that in particular that I I always turn to whenever I have to leave somewhere early starts with just a, I think they're about 12 minutes usually and it starts with a little bit of music. Um, sometimes it can be like a formal um, choir singing in a cathedral. Sometimes it's one gentleman playing acoustic guitar. It varies. And then from there, they do um, a reading of a passage of scripture. And they, after the first reading, will kind of ask you some questions, kind of help you a little bit of a um, Lectio Divina process um, where you're reflecting on on the scripture and how it, not only how it impacts you, but also how it would have impacted the people who are actually living those um, particular verses. And then from there, they will read it again and pray and then end with music. So again, 12, you know, 12 minutes, just enough time to um, either get you on the road or get you somewhere specifically. And those are, those are really helpful too. I love the practice of Lexio. That is really, really helpful for me as well. Like just to, um, especially the part of it where they invite you to, and I'm not, I'm not familiar with the specific one that you're referring to, but it sounds like similar to what I've done where they really invite you to like put yourself in the historical context and like imagine yourself in the scene and just find that very helpful for me when I engage my imagination in prayer, that helps me to really like concretize God. Um, because I think I spent a lot of my walk with the Lord especially as a young person where it was very like abstract, just like God is, we don't know, you know, airy. Yeah. Like, and <laughs> it's just kind of hard to get yeah. my arms around it ever. And to really feel like I was entering into an authentic relationship with him because that humanized context was, was missing at times. And so I really, I really find that practice to be helpful. So then once you've kind of primed your mind with this morning routine, um, how does it show up throughout your day to just really remember that God is there with you? We have conversations throughout the day. Um, and that can be so simple. Like 
um, and, and I think this is probably a little bit of training of your mind. Um, but I also believe getting the mindset going in the morning can kind of condition you to it. And it could be anything as simple as, uh, I like to think I'm organized, <laughs> but an awful lot of things go missing <laughs> for me to call myself organized. And so it can be something as simple as, okay, I know this particular book is in the office on the bookshelf. God, can you help me find it? Like just guide my eyes, my, you know, and then sometimes it might be a while. Sometimes it may not even happen that day. But when I do find the book, we have a chuckle and I say, you know, thank you so much for, for finding. Um, and I also find that setting my mind on him first thing often brings to mind um, other people. It, and it may be somebody that knows specifically why God brought them to mind and I'll pray for them and it might surprise you. And then I'll say, you know, God, I don't know why you've brought them to mind in this particular moment, but I do lift them up in prayer. So it, it's this way of um, throughout the day, engaging both God and those people that he brings to mind. Um, you know, that's those moments are when I might get a prompt to sh- send someone a text um, or earlier this fall, we're just in the midst of a ton of decision-making for our family. Um, just considering if some major changes were needing to happen. And I was pretty, I was somewhat private about it. You know, a, a two or three people who are in my close, close circle knew, but otherwise these were just kind of family conversations we are having. And I had so many people reach out to me and say, Hey, you came to mind today. I'm not sure why, but just wanted you to know, you know, that um, praying for you or think you're a good mom or glad you're my friend, just encouragement, you know, and that's all those divine threads are just um, such a comforting thing to experience and to be able to offer as well. I have always found in my life that those things happen when I'm in a season, not, not exclusively, but primarily it, when I'm in a season where I will be aware that it's truly God at the root of those movements. Whereas, you know, I think about seasons where I just wasn't aware that he was going to be the one moving and the one, you know, prompting other people to reach out to me and things like that. And I think that God moves a lot of times, not because he can't move at other times, but he moves when we will attribute those movements to him. And so sometimes when we aren't in a very intimate relationship with God, it's those big things. Like there will be something, you know, real big that happens, but, but maybe just a one-off sort of like that, where God is like, you know, how can I get your attention kind of thing? Whereas when we are walking in a level of intimacy and awareness with him, there's all these just little things kind of sprinkled throughout that whole day. Is that been your experience as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. And as you're saying that, um, I know we're trying to put some legs, if you will, to these concepts. Uh, So many things I have found in my life that are able to create that mindset Um, I'm thinking of the experiences that have helped me grow in my faith in silence, you know, and I'm not very good at silence. Neither is our world. (laughs) So if you, you know, even setting the kitchen timer for two minutes and saying, I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to reflect on the goodness of God. If you're a journaler, maybe have you a journal beside you and write down just words that describe him. Um, I, I, I don't know uh, if you're familiar with Brother Lawrence. He's kind of the uh, stereotypical example. But um, it, in the writings of Brother Lawrence, he was a, a monk. I forget when he lived, but his whole experience was trying to incorporate Christ and a focus on Christ in everything he did. So when he was doing the dishes, he would you know, be, be in prayer to God. Um, The Orthodox tradition gives us a beautiful um, prayer called the Jesus prayer, which is actually taken from scripture. Um, It's the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner, variations thereof. And 
with the first time I went to a Orthodox Christian service, it was a Vespers, I think is what they called it. it. And it was at noon. And one of the things that we did was say that Jesus prayer, which I w- was at least had been introduced to before then. And we said it 42 times mm-hmm. in a row. <laughs> and I remember thinking, who's counting the foot? You know, I mean, your mind is just wandering like crazy. But the idea behind it is saying that prayer so regularly that becomes a part of your rhythm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's such things as breath prayers where you, um, you know, breathe in Jesus, breathe out Christ. It can be something as simple as those two words, but again, all of this, um, quiets the world for a little while, even if it's 30 seconds and guides you back into that focus, um, on Christ. And from there, then we've given the mind and the heart permission to find those encounters. Yeah, absolutely. I love, and I love being a Christian at this time in history so much because what we are seeing is the neuroscience, like catching up with what the Christian tradition has been for forever, which is that we really form these neural pathways through repetition, like by the, you know, you are, you very functionally become the things that you repeatedly think and do. And so, you know, the encouragement for repeated prayer, daily prayer, these things are really for our good to form the, you know, to, partner with how God created our brains to work to form the neural pathways that are going to make it um, easier for us to go ahead and, you know, come together with what it is that God is wanting to show us in our lives. And so it's just cool because, you know, it so clearly works. Like when you embrace, um, intimacy with him and going after thinking about him on a regular basis, it does change your life completely. And so then all of the things that come along and support it, you're just like, well, of course, you know? <laughs> yes, it, it is. It's kind of like um, pieces clicking rather than brand new revelation. You're like, of course, of course this makes sense. You know, I mean, it's the same, uh, you know, we are talking about that idea of even an individual faith being a corporate faith. And I've done a few articles now where I break down the Lord's Prayer. And and we can often pray that all, all by ourselves, right? Like at, at home in our, you know, individual prayer, worship time. But the very first words are our Father, you know, and so again, all of these things just, um, I'll go back to the phrase. They just click as you, as you realize it. it's like, huh, I've never really thought about it, but of course, of course that makes sense. And regarding the neuroscience of what prayer does for us, I have read a couple of different, I'm um, an av- voracious reader, um, do a ton of reading And I've read a couple of books on other world faith traditions. So um, Buddhism and uh, Judaism, et cetera, that also find benefits to prayer. And what I love about prayer as a Christian, um, for me personally, and for those um, who practice Christianity, is the removal of self in it. Um, I'm not praying to find my peace. I'm praying to find my savior. Um, and just again, that, that reconnection with God, as opposed to being caught up in what's stressing me out or what's on the to-do list today, or, you know, so I, I think every human being needs this, this quietness and this, um, time of reflection, but I love as a Christian that it, its intent is always to bring us back before God, back, back in the arms of Jesus. Absolutely. So if we had to, to just wrap up here, if we had someone um, come to you and say, you know, Tracy, I really don't know what you're talking about. I don't experience this (laughs) kind of intimacy with God. I'm not aware of him as I go through my day. What one thing, 
would you encourage this person to start with to kind of begin the ball rolling down the hill? One thing I would probably encourage an individual to turn to one of the gospels. Um, If you have a Bible where they're written in Jesus words are written in red, then find a red verse in the gospels and I would write it out. Um, And then prayerfully ask, what do I do with it from here? Maybe write it out every day for two weeks. Um, There's benefit to that repetitive action of of writing something. Maybe you write it out and then you journal underneath what that verse is saying to you. Maybe you read it out loud. There's a whole different spiritual connection that happens when we um, voice our Bible readings. Um, You know, Google it. It I mean, it's amazing how learning can also be a form of worship. Um, So, you know, learn more about the verse that way, but, but that honing in just on one idea and one verse, I would definitely say could get the ball rolling. Awesome. I love that. Tracy, thank you so much for your time today. Um, We will link to Tracy's book in the show notes so that you can check it out and also where you can connect with Tracy elsewhere online. I hope that you guys have a wonderful week. Thanks for being with me. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Authentic Uprising podcast. It is always a joy to be with you. I encourage you to subscribe to our podcast, subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, whichever place you most prefer or do it all if that is what floats your boat. We would love to continue to get to know you better and grow in relationship with you. And so I encourage you to check out the links in both our show notes and our YouTube description that tell you more about where you can connect with us elsewhere. The two big things we have going on besides the podcast is our shop that is full of reminders of who you are in God, helping you to really grow in that radical art of standing in who you are and giving gifts that help others to do the same. The other big thing we have going on is the Uprising Academy. This is all of our formation um, programs, workshops, retreats. Everything is available virtually and on demand where you can sign up and continue to learn more about radically standing in what God says about you especially if you are in a place in your life where you are not being fed the way that you long to be fed, whether it's in your community, whether it's at your church, whatever it is, there is more for you and we can absolutely walk with you into it through the Uprising Academy. All those links are in our show notes. And if you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to leave a review. Reviews are the number one way that we help get in front of new faces new people that are able to be touched by the radical art of standing and what God says about us. I love you. I'm praying for you. I hope you have an amazing week.